So, Fabian, would you, would you just talk a little bit about how you designed that sequence, if that's what happened? Uh, yeah, yeah, of course I designed it, yes, yes. Uh, OK, a, f- a couple of home truths, right. Um, my kids were growing up in the 90s, and this music was in their zone, and I, I shouldn't have gone there, so I didn't. And, um, you know, you wanted to hear music from the 90s and asked me to get some tracks when we were here last week. Uh, so what could I do but contact them and say, help, give me some good music. And they gave me a short list of about 20 and Dan in particular, he recorded some. And um, I then, that, that was really useful because it narrowed it down. And then I could really quite easily sort of indulge myself in, in choosing them according to um, a pattern which you've just listened to, you know. But um, yeah, that, that's, that, that's how, I, how I got the music. But I mean, you know, I'm so glad to have listened to it because, you know, people talk about a deprived childhood. I had a deprived parenthood. <laughs> I just such good music, and I'm only now just getting into it, you know, t- 12 years later. <laughs> yeah. Well, that is, that is a reason, reasonable way to, to, go, to go on. So do, do, you, do you follow Bristol music since then? Uh, uh, since last night, yes. Well, <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, we've got our schedule for the World Show. On those occasions when Chris is, uh, is away, we might try and catch up with... Uh, Bristol in the last 10 years or this century it'd be good yeah because there's, it's it's rich isn't it Bristol is such a rich cultural city and it's right on our doorstep and uh, I love it I love it up there well I think during this year the Southwest Music Awards which have been an extra for the last couple of years is, is going to move to, to Bristol so maybe we'll we'll be invited to go along and we find out what's going we on we don't want to lose too much to Bristol do we <laughs> well no no but what I thought we might do is go up there and scan some of their buildings oh, right. and bring them back to Exeter. How about that? Because we haven't mentioned what you what you normally do. I'm off yeah. JD of normally playing 80s music, which I thought was a fair comment, but anyway, he can he can comment on that himself later on if he yeah. wants. Um, but you do you do most of the time work with with scanning because we met you through the 3D printing That's right. show. That's right. Yeah, yeah. I I, I have a scanning. It's, it's like. Uh, for those who don't know what 3D scanning is, it's like having a radar and capturing the picture, but then you can take the picture and, say, put it inside a computer and you can walk all around it. You can see it every which way, uh, and if you like what you see, you can even get it printed with a 3D printing machine. So it's, 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 it's good fun. What I do is, is work for sculptors and um, sculptors and, and mechanical engineers who want to get machinery components and parts reproduced and or designed and so on. So, yeah, that's what I do. But in, in theory, we could go to Bristol and scan the Colston Hall and scale it down a bit to make it fit in next to... It, it needs a pretty expensive scanner, and we'd need to get hold of one. But, yes, it can be And a budget. And yeah. a budget, unless I can wangle the, uh, the loan of one for free, just on some excuse. OK. OK. Well, well, we'll come back to that, but let's just stick with music or ju- just yeah. design science in general for, for, for the time being mm. um, because it's, a, it's, a, it's an idea that can be applied to anything, I think. Uh, we may persuade JD eventually it can be applied to a, a radio show. Uh, we'll see how that goes. I'd, I'd like to play a, a, an extract from um, YouTube. It's, it's a Google Hangout, uh, which I've discovered... I think I think we, you can set them up quite readily, yes. um, and so several people can can just talk to each other, and then there's a record of it. And this one comes from the Olds MOOC. That's the online design studio, massive open online course. But if you if you start off with Olds O L D S dot ac dot uk, you'll find out a lot more about it. And um, this is part of I think it's week five, which is a couple of weeks ago, and uh, it was a I, I just asked them what what design science was about, and um, this is one of the explanations that that we had. For me, going back to the design science, uh, Will, for me the the scientific the science part of it is is the practical part of it. Um, having having been trained as in scientific method, it's kind of what I'm doing really. I've I've got a hypothesis, an idea that that I want to go out and test. Um, so I don't know whether I'm on the same page as, as you guys about what scientific method is. So I've got my hypothesis, my idea. I'm going out and 
testing it. Uh, I've decided on the equipment I want to use. I've chosen my infrastructure, or I call it e-infrastructure. I've, I've uh, signed. I've chosen my e-skills. No, what, a, what Merck Skills name, and so I've applied that. I've got my Twitter feed and my Facebook page and all, all those kinds of things in the name. Um, so I'm gathering together my equipment and my resources. I'm sort of um, writing out my method, <coughs> which is one process in the scientific method. That That's sort of what's circulating at the moment on the Google Doc. Um, and I'm about to experiment on my guinea pigs in a few days' time, maybe. And then after I've done that, I hope I'll collect the information and reflect on it, um, make some summaries or draw some graphs or, I don't know, a few blog reflections. And then I'll, I'll look at it and evaluate what I've done and think about any improvements that I can do next time around. So for me, that... that the process of, of scientific method is a very much a practical one and it guides me in the planning of, of my project. So I don't know whether I'm on the same page as, as what scientific uh, learning design is. So someone needs to help me out here. Thanks. I think you no, that was useful to me. Go ahead, Will. Well, just, just to say that's useful to me because that shows me how, how the words science and design are, are being used, how somebody understands it. And um, I, I think that's just as useful as a, a formal definition of, of design science because I think all these, all these um, phrases, get, they gain strength um, because they make sense to people, you know, as well as there being a, 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 a formal definition somewhere. So as a description of science in, in, in use, I, I think that was very useful. Yeah, I was going to say a very similar thing. So I thought it was, I mean, it's, it's sort of seeing the science as a, as a process based really. And um, um, the way you described what you were doing, it, it, it's like the, the sort of sequence of the MOOC fits completely with that. And the, the sequencing of, of the actions can become just as important as going down into the depths of it. And again, it's part of the reason why I perhaps haven't highlighted the theory side so much, that through the application of a process where you, you carry out the uh, initial design, prototyping, getting feedback, evaluation, reflection on the result, um, it, it turns into a sort of science of design at that level without then having to go so much down what is the base of this? What is the theoretical side of it? Um, and I, th I think uh, Sheila's made a, a, a side on this, which is about sort of the theory and common understandings, misunderstandings. I mean, it is, it is sort of how does theory become practice? And at some stage, maybe you don't need to necessarily go down to the roots of it, but go see whether it works to, for your own way of thinking. That was a really good description. Mm -hmm. uh, back to you, Sheila. No, I was just going to second that, Patrick, and, and um, say, Penny, I think that's a really useful way of looking at it, because it's certainly, I never think of myself being very scientific in anything that I do, and I suspect I'm not the only person like that, because if you don't have a science background, you don't kind of think in those terms, but just the way you explained it there, we, we are all kind of doing that, so I think that's really useful um, to, to have captured that. Um, and yeah, I think, Patrick, you're right, I think it's... Um, Maybe we yeah, think about that because I and maybe that goes back to the, my earlier point that um about you know I sometimes think that maybe when we talk about science it can be quite alienating but if we're talking about it as a practical as more the process and the approach then actually it's quite encompassing and that that's actually been quite a revelation for me so thank you Penny <laughs> that's all right I like like the scientific method um hopefully a whole lot of people will join in the conversation but in my eyes the scientific method is is the the practical side of how to develop a model of something. If you look at the the atomic theory, say, um, the first ideas of, of about what a, what an atom is, what what matter is made up of, is very different um, now to what it was hundreds of years ago. And the development of that theory of that model has has been a, we can attribute that to the practicalities of scientific method. So as equipment becomes more sophisticated and 
more detailed experiments are able to be done, then the theory of the atom, what the atom is, it has, has develops over time. So maybe maybe that's what Cloudworks is. It's, it's really our, um, our model of learning design that is improving over time as all of the evidence and the results and the data and and all of that come in. So maybe that's an analogy of, of how we should look at, at Cloudworks. It's our um, it's our theory, it's our model of learning design based on the evidence that we're collecting by our methods. There you go. <laughs> Enough said. So that was a, a clip the, the whole thing is on YouTube. If you, if you look for Old's MOOC, and I think that is week five, and that's a, a, li a little bit out of it, and it's Penny Bentley, the, the Australian voice you heard there, Pen Penny Bentley, who is also on Facebook and lots of other places. And um, I don't know if JD's any more convinced that we can use all this on radio. No. No. <laughs> no, <laughs> definitely not. Well, that's OK. It, put, it gives a dynamic to the show, doesn't it, that we, we still... Still need to make the case. Yes, the unknown pit. <laughs> yes? <laughs> Where we might teeter over and fall over into it. <laughs> um, did, Fabian, did, 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 what did you make of that? Did, that, did you find that re relevant to what you do or to radio or other things? Well, what, what I thought about it was, was um, you know, I've been struggling with, with the fact that science is a bit of a, a, a difficult word, really, um, and... Um, it's, it's, some people are rather precious about it and some people object to it and so they, put, they fend it off. And so if, if, we, if we... OK, there's the label. It was Buckminster Fuller who sort of coined the phrase design science in the early 60s. Science was a very different word then and today it's got all sorts of other baggage. So um, inevitably, it, it, design science might not quite fit with us easily today. But at the end of the day, uh, if you think about designing things and how you go about it um, designing a show of course you design a show you, because you write down a schedule or you pick up the sequence of tracks you want um, and you've got learning design we just talked about that um, there's a guy I know who's frequently in the Phoenix here who, who's, whose job his employment is all to do with service design for businesses to, to take care in organising and presenting the services that people will, will actually benefit from and want uh, you've got anyone who writes a school essay they're into design science technically because they're sorting out what the hell they're going to write. Okay, <laughs> uh, they take it into the home. If you if you're cooking a meal, uh, you're you're using design science as well. But let's forget about the title because what you're doing is thinking who's going to eat it. Oh, what are we going to put into it? What what do we cook and when do we cook each part of it? And and oh, have we got somewhere to eat it and so on. So that's that's being methodical, but it's, it's no big deal. And I think. To, to come back onto design science as, as a sort of a titled exercise is just trying to sort of step back and be a bit methodical about it in case you haven't quite got it right and you want to dip into a bit of homework to, to organise yourself in order to get it right. But once you are getting it right, then you're freewheeling, aren't you? And you don't get hung up about titles like design science. And I think that's where JD is at. He's just, <laughs> he's doing it, he's living it. <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's well, design science as a, as a method, but also as a way of analysing things, maybe, that you can apply science to what people do. I do observe he, he does worry about the timings. Mm -hmm. He seems to know we've got, we've got to keep going till 12 o'clock. Not the same we don't time. have to. We don't? <laughs> 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 OK, JD, I've got, I've got a proposal. I think we'll play one, one track from Blur, yeah. which you found on your hard, ample hard drive. No, my hard drive, no. Well, well some, one of your systems. <laughs> yes, cloud. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming from the cloud. Well, that's just as well. And then um, there's, there's a bit from Stranglebury mm -hmm. from the Phonic Benefit, uh, which w is more or less their complete set. So that could that could fill in the end of the program, and the next presenter can fade it out. Is this or is not. a cop out? You want to go and have coffee? Well, I think I think coffee coffee is beckoning. <laughs> We've been here for <laughs> almost two hours. Well, since half past.